You know, the intermittent fasting people, they feel best on their full fast days. I haven't eaten anything in 24 hours. That's when they run their marathons. So if you think about it biochemically, it makes sense because, you know, we eat carbohydrates and that jacks your insulin up. Insulin forces energy into cells. It doesn't allow it to come out of cells. And so now you've locked down all your fat stores, which is your gas tank. You can only run on the glucose that you've taken in. And so your blood sugar, once that goes down, you have a limited amount of glycogen in your muscles and your liver. It's still a finite resource because you can't actually replenish that glycogen. Whereas if if you are in a fasted state, or as I think of it as our primary metabolic state, it's an unlimited supply because you continually replenish your glycogen in your muscles and in your liver. I, I don't know exactly how it started, but I, I definitely did notice that I would feel better when I didn't eat. You know, so I would certainly wait several hours, you know, if I was training or something like that, I would never eat within two hours of that. But then I even noticed that if I ate within two hours, it would, you know, or, or three hours or something like that, I would still feel like, you know, there's still food being digested and it didn't feel comfortable. And so I would just sort of go back less and less and less, and then, you know, ended up sort of wouldn't eat like an afternoon or evening meal before I would go to go to training. And then I was, you know, training from 3 PM to 10 PM. And I just wasn't going to eat anyway. So I would eat something early in the morning and then I eat something late at night, but for the games, you know, because of that, I didn't want to eat too close to the meal and, you know, being, you know, a young person has just, you know, never liked mornings. I would wake up absolutely as late as possible before I absolutely just had to get up and get ready and go to my training and, or, or to my game. Sorry. And so, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have time to eat. And so I just got used to just never eating before the games. And then I, I started even noticing that, if I would eat later at night, I, I would actually not even feel as good as if I lay, ate earlier in the night and so forth. And I would never eat before for the game. And it mostly it, it started out being with that, just that timing of like, you know, just felt like there was something that I was still digesting. And I didn't like that. Um, and then I just noticed it like with, with, you know, uh, playing sevens, you have like a whole tournament. Yeah. Um, I would feel great throughout the whole day. And if, you know, halfway through something like that, I would like eat something it would just shut me down and I would never feel as good after that. And so I, I never ate until all the games were done. Um, I've known a couple people like that. There was a guy, uh, Philomone, um, who I played with, who's uh, actually played sevens on the Fijian national team before he moved up to Seattle. And I played sevens with him there with uh, old Puget Sound beach. And um, he, he would do the same thing. So he wow. like just refused to eat the entire day uh, for, um, tournaments and things like that. Um, I think we were the only, probably the only two on the team that did that. And then, so, you know, even if I had like a game late at night, say like, you know, evening game, like a 7 PM game or something like that, yeah. you know, I would, I would think like, well, maybe I should eat something earlier. And every time I did, I felt worse. I didn't perform as well. I didn't feel as well. And so I just, just had the blanket hard rule. Like I will not eat on the day of the game. And I just, you know, I felt much, much better uh, because of that, you know, the intermittent fasting people will say, tell you the same thing. You know, they, they feel best on their, their full fast days where they have, they just haven't, haven't eaten anything in 24 hours. That's when they run their marathons. That's when they do their big endurance, um, you know, in, endurance uh, meets or whatever. And, and, you know, if you think about it biochemically, it makes sense because, you know, we eat carbohydrates and that jacks your insulin up. Insulin forces energy into cells. It doesn't allow it to come out of cells. And so now you've locked down all your fat stores, which is your gas tank. And yeah. so you can only run on the, the glucose that you've taken in. And so your blood sugar, once that goes down, you know, you have a limited amount of glycogen in your muscles and your, and your liver, um, and your, your people's carbo load and so forth, but it's, it's still a finite resource because you can't actually replenish that glycogen. Uh, whereas if you are in a fasted state, or as I think of it as our primary metabolic state, it's an unlimited supply because you continually replenish your glycogen in your muscles and in your liver. There's studies going back to the 1981 with wolves looking at this, you know, they don't eat, they don't carbo load before they chase caribou for 10 hours, you know, so how do they do it? And people ask, there's like, well, don't you need carbs to burn carbs? Do they have carbs? Like, yes, they do. It's just like us. They have blood sugar, liver glycogen, muscle glycogen, but it stays rock solid. It doesn't change no matter what they're doing. It's basically here. I'm sure there's a little fluctuations, but it's essentially the same. And so that's the thing. Whereas 
when you carbo load, you have that, that's a finite resource because you cannot replenish this because insulin stays up for roughly 24 hours in biochemistry textbook. It's, it's 24 then, hours. The way that I'm kind of understanding it, Dr. Chafe, is it's like, if you haven't carbo loaded mm-hmm. and you haven't jammed the, what is it, the glycogen into your cells, mm-hmm. uh, which means it's almost like an open door. So you can burn what the fat, am I right in saying you burn the fat that you've consumed initially and then you can yeah. just kind of open the door and start tapping into the fat storage in your body. Is that yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if your insulin is too high, it shuts that down. So insulin blocks proteolysis, it blocks lipolysis. So you can't break down protein or fat to make glucose, right? So to, you know, for gluconeogenesis, right? So because high blood sugar is toxic to the body, this is what kills diabetics, right? It's prolonged exposure to high blood sugar. Your body reacts in a defensive mechanism by increasing your uh, insulin and that you know, just to get this stuff out of your blood system. And so that can be put into your cells in the form of glycogen that can be put into your liver in the, in the same manner. And it it gets thrown into your adipose tissue as well, your fat tissue. Um, that's not actually a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing in the sense that it's getting rid of this toxic element in your, in your bloodstream, but that's not actually what we want to do. That's not a physiological, uh, benefit to us to do that because it's while you're getting more glycogen, you're shutting down a lot of biochemical systems and processes that you really need a much better energy store is your fat. So people say, well, we need to eat a whole bunch of carbs. So you store up a bunch of glycogen. Well, you're going to be storing a bunch of fat as well. So it's not just glycogen. So that's not, a, that's not a benefit. Uh, if you're trying to you know reduce your, your body fat, but it's also not a benefit because you're shoving all this energy into your fat cells that now you can't access. You can only access the glycogen. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor, Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work, and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat only products that will be available in the mainstream so if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind check it out using my discount code anthony to get 10 percent off which also applies to subscriptions giving you 25 percent off total all right thanks guys and so you have to wait for that insulin to come down naturally and you know that can take around 24 hours and so you have the intermittent fasting people that only eat sort of once a day and they just wait out that clock on the insulin, they work out basically right before they're going to eat again and they feel great. And there's no wonder they feel great because they can tap into their fat stores and get an unlimited amount of energy because you're you're really not going to run out of your fat stores unless you're extremely emaciated and and literally starving to death. People still survive days or weeks in that state. So, you know, people with normal body habitus and fat content, even if they're very lean, they're, they're going to be able to run a marathon or an ultra marathon without, without running out of their fat stores. That's not, that's not going to be an issue. You don't need to eat carbs. And so I just fell upon that naturally. Um, other people have, have done this purposefully through intermittent fasting, but for me, I just noticed how my body was working and I just, just sort of, um, you know, played with it until I got, got, uh, the results that I wanted. Yeah. Right. I mean, I've sort of been playing around with it as well. And now I'll, mm-hmm eat dinner the night before and then ideally I'll train at like 12 30 or 1 p.m and then I'll have Mm -hmm. my first meal after that and I feel so much better like endurance is better I feel more explosive as well um yeah just just train for longer and 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 enjoy it more the idea of going back is is just not something I wanted to yeah no, I, I, I just feel so much better as well. And, you know, now that I'm conscious about it and I understand, and I'm, and I'm thinking about it in a biochemical sort of way and, you know, what is actually happening, you know, obviously I'm not going to mess with that. Um, I also feel better just when I'm eating carnivore, uh, still eating, you know, working out on an empty stomach, I still feel better yeah. doing that. Well, mostly usually if I eat, I eat until I'm full until I'm satiated. And when I do, I get quite sleepy and happy and contented and lethargic. Uh, you know, you're going in from your, your fight or flight to rest and digest. And so you're, you're giving your body a signal. It's like, I've gotten, I've gotten all this energy. I don't need any more, like take it easy. Don't expend more energy. We're just going to take it easy. Now we're going to repair everything. 
Um, and so that's why I eat late at night. You only need to worry about timing of your meals. If you're eating carbohydrates, if you eat, eat carbohydrates later at night, um, you're going to raise your insulin. Insulin, uh, opposes growth hormone. Your peak growth hormone production happens two hours after you go to sleep at night. And so you're really going to screw up your, your body's hormones in that way, because, you know, growth hormone is a very, very important hormone in your body for, uh, aging, uh, and repair and, um, you know, development and so forth. So if you're eating carbohydrates late at night, it's, uh, it, you're going to shut down those mechanisms. Um, if you, eat carbohydrates at any time, you're going to be shutting down a lot of mechanisms, but that's specifically the timing part of it. So I eat, you know, right before I go to bed, I feel great. When I do that, I sleep like a baby. Um, how many meals? Do you know, have? Say again, sorry. Are you one meal a day or how, how many meals a day do you have? Usually. So it depends on how hard I'm training. Um, and it depends on how fatty the meal is that I have. So if it's a high fat beef meal, then I'll eat, um, usually just once a day. But if I'm just training, 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 like, uh, hard, if I actually have the time to, uh, I might do that twice a day and that, and that's fine. Um, if it's, if I'm getting more lean stuff, I'm definitely going to be hungrier more than once a day because there's, you know, uh, much less calories and nutrition in uh, very lean meat. So you just need more pounds of meat in order to, to get the same cal caloric intake. And, um, I find that if I'm going to eat during the day and I don't want to be sort of sleepy and lethargic, I'll hold myself back from, you know, I won't quite eat to, uh, to satiety. I'll just, I'll just eat a lot, you know, and enough. And I'll just be like, okay, I'll just stop it there. Um, and I find that works a little better. Sometimes I've had different experiences where, I'll eat a steak, but I won't eat until I'm full and it'll just supercharge me. I don't know why. And I'll just, I just feel like I just got to go do something. I've got to go, you know, kill an animal or something. You know, I just like, I just like just charged up where it's like, you know, I don't know exactly what that mechanism is. Maybe yeah. it's just, you've given yourself enough energy and your body's just like, right. We need more of that. Let's go. Yeah, get it. Yeah. Let's go. You know, but, um, you know, I, I like, I generally like working out and then eating because I think of it as like, you know, an animal out in the wild, you know, predator out in the wild, you're, you're going your hunt, you're chasing this thing down, you've taken it down, you've killed it, and now you're going to eat it. And mm -hmm. so I just think, you know, uh, physiologically, you know, there may be nothing to it, but that's how I like to think about it.